How many of you actually think about audio fidelity on a daily basis? <laughs> a few of you? I do constantly. I'm thinking about it right now as I talk to you in this hall. I'm thinking about the reverb and the acoustics of this room. But I'm not just talking about that, and I'm not just talking about analog versus digital, because that's a whole other debate. And I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy the latest stereo system for your, uh, for your home. What I'm going to talk to you today about is tuning in and tuning up. You need to listen more and listen closer. 70% of music consumers listen to their music on smartphones, tablets, and computers. 64% of teens are using YouTube as their main source of playback. Now, YouTube's streaming quality is not very good. That's what I, I want to drill into you today. Let's get a historical perspective. Album sales for the past, well, this is since the Recording Industry Association of America started recording album sales, you can see that in the 90s, there was an album sales heyday. So that was a lot of people listening to Backstreet Boys, OK? <laughs> since then, there's been a huge downturn in album sales. From 1994 to 2013, so the past 20 years of multi-platinum album sales. From 1994 to 2003, there were 23 albums that each sold 20 plus million copies. It's a lot. From 2004 to 2013, there were two. Usher's Confessions in 2004 and Adele's 21 in 2011. Why is this? Well, with the advent of Napster in 1999, file sharing became prominent. And most people started trading files and piracy and all that stuff, but that's another TED Talk in itself. But now, it's mostly streaming. Most people are getting their music from Pandora, Spotify, YouTube. But with streaming, it's the audio is compressed. What does that mean? It's a smaller file size, so that it can be streamed more easily and more effectively and quicker. What does data compression do to your sound quality? We'll take, for instance, this, this picture. You can see it's kind of pixelated. You can kind of make out the shapes and whatnot. So this is, would be like an MP3 version of a picture. You don't get the full resolution. But with full resolution, you see what the picture is. So what does this do to the sound? Well, in the audio, professional, or in the audio industry, we call lossy audio has a case of the swirlies. Okay? This is an actual industry term. I'm not just coining this. So I have a recording of an uncompressed 18-inch crash cymbal. <laughs> Sounds like a crash cymbal, doesn't it? Sounds pretty normal. So next, I'm going to do an MP3 version of the same recording, and I want you to listen to the higher frequencies. <laughs> Hear those little things? Hear the compression? Those are the swirlies. Again, back to back. How many of you actually heard that in, their, in your audio sometimes? Most of you. So most of you tuned in. That's good. So what does this do to a full-size piece of music? So now I'm going to listen, we're going to play back a 15-second clip over and over again with more degradation in the audio. This is CD quality, 16-bit, 44.1. Sounds pretty clear. Sounds pretty good. Next, we have iTunes, 256 kilobits per second. The finest ear will be able to pick this out, but for most consumers, they can hear it. They don't hear much of a difference. Spotify encodes at 160 kilobits per second. This is for their free users. If you're a premium user, it can go up to 320, which is marginally better. Anybody hear a difference yet? A little bit? YouTube, 128. All these teens are listening to music using YouTube. This is what they get. And lastly, Pandora, for their free users, most of you are probably free Pandora users, they're encoding at 64 kilobits per second. Sounds pretty terrible, doesn't it? Yeah. So again, I'm going to compare the CD quality versus the worst quality. There is worse quality. You can go less than this, but I decided not to go further. 
So CD quality versus Pandora, back to back. And now the Pandora version. Everybody can hear the difference, right? Good. So what is actually lost? You may ask yourself, why does this matter? What is actually lost? We'll listen to the full wave file again. By subtracting the wave from the MP3, we can hear what is lost. So this is what is lost in an MP3 file at 256 kilobits per second. You can kind of make out the drum beat. This is what's taken out. You can kind of hear some cymbals. That's about it. So it's not that lossy. How about at 128, YouTube quality? Well, I can hear the vocals. You can hear the bass, the drums. And now in MP3, at 64 kilobits per second, you can almost hear the whole song. It sounds creepy and weird, but it's there. You can recognize it as the song that it is. Inevitably, after this talk, somebody will come up to me and say, well, what about analog formats? Yeah, I have a huge vinyl collection in my home. But analog formats suffer differently. They suffer from what's called dynamic range, which is your softest sound to your loudest sound. With a CD, you have 16 bits, so that's 96 decibels. That's quite a lot of range. With vinyl, it's down to 11 bits, with 66 decibels. So we lose the dynamic range because of all those clicks and pops and hisses that we love. With cassette, it's five bits, or 30 decibels of range. Okay? It's sad to think that the last four albums I've produced have solely come out on, cass on cassette. It makes me kind of upset. So why should you demand more from your audio? Well, the average internet speeds in America are now about 20 megabits per second, okay? So what does that mean? Well, for uh, Netflix HD quality video, all you need is a minimum of five megabits per second. So that's HD video. That's a lot more information than a high quality wave or audio file would be. So we could definitely, with our current internet system, uh, be able to provide higher quality audio. Why are Spotify and Pandora and YouTube not doing this? Because there's no demand for it. No one is out there saying, I want more out of my music. I want more out of my audio. I don't want to put up with this lossy format anymore. This isn't, yes, it, it, it goes quicker, but it will go quicker because the internet speeds are faster than they were 10, 20 years ago. So how do we become better listeners? Well, you can tune in, you can tune up. I like to listen to albums on multiple formats. I do listen to streaming. I uh, do, I'm a Spotify subscriber, so when I'm at work, usually I am listening to Spotify. I do collect vinyl. Most vinyl albums now come with MP3 downloads that I can put on my iPod. So then I, when I'm running or jogging, then I can listen to my, uh, the iPod, the MP3 format, and I can listen to the vinyl. And they all sound different. They all have different qualities. Secondly, keep your ear on. I always have my ear on. For the rest of today, while you're listening to these talks, think about the reverb in this room. Think about the lecturer's voices. Think about the music when you're out shopping at Wegmans, what's coming, what's coming over the intercoms. But most importantly, remember to enjoy music. Remember to keep listening to it, tune in, tune up, and listen closer. Thank you.